Danasega is working as a lecturer in Department of Information Technology, Anna University, Chennai. He finished his MCA from Urumu Dhanalakshmi College, Bharati Dasan University. He finished his ME in Computer Science and Engineering from College of Engineering, Anna University. His areas of interest are multicore programming and architecture, programming models, compiler, automata theory, cryptography and algorithms. He is an expertise in subjects like compiler design, formal languages and automata theory, analysis of algorithms. His research area is code generation for multicore architecture. Welcome to the UGC lecture series on computer science. Here we have the subject theory of computation. Let me start with what we got in the previous episode of the same subject. So we have seen the definition for post correspondence problem that is PCP which means that uh, you are uh, given two lists of strings. The number of strings available in both the lists must be same but whereas the strings I mean the corresponding pairs not necessarily be same. Even there is not required that there should be a prefix max exactly. But when you go for uh, the uh, PCP which has to be proved as an this undecidable problem we need to have a transformation from the LU to PCP so that it will be easy for proving that it is going to be an undecidable problem. So for that we have uh, done a simple transformation we have taken MPCP problem which has been reduced into PCP that is we have seen the reduction of uh, that is MPCP to PCP. So the PCP and the MPCP are differing in the sense that uh, uh, which pair has been taken as the corresponding pair for the first time. In the case of PCP there is no uh, rule about which pair is to be taken but whereas in the case of MPCP the first pair is to be taken that is going to be strict rule. But when you are reducing MPCP to PCP what happens is the whatever the condition available in your MPCP that is the condition that we must start with the very first pair is no more in PCP but is implicitly that we can start only with the very first pair. We cannot start with any pair other than that because in such a way that the MPCP has been reduced into PCP. So if MPCP has a solution then we can claim that PCP has a solution. If MPCP has no solution then PCP is also not having solution provided the PCP is obtained by reducing MPCP into PCP by that construction. So today we are going to prove that the MPCP is reducible to PCP. So here the two lists are given for you that is as far as MPCP is concerned we have list A and B and the solution is let it be I1, I2, I3 etc. up to IM. Now we are having the concatenation since it is going to be MPCP we must take the first pair that is W1 and here it is X1 the rest of the things are obtained by taking the solution space the solution space means the index sequence I1 to IM. So WI1, WI2 etc. up to WIM and the XI1, XI2 etc. up to XIM. So now what should be done is by replacing these WIs, Ws by Ys and X by Z. That is we are going to replace this Ws by uh, that is corresponding their Ys which are there in your equivalent PCP instance and X by the corresponding Z once again it is there in the equivalent PCP instance. So what we should do is we will be having an equal almost equivalent string called Y1, Yi1, Yi2 etc. up to Yim and we will be having Z1, Zi1, Zi2 etc. up to Zim which shows that the difference is the star is actually missing in the beginning of the first string and the end of the second string that is star y1 but in the right hand side it is going to be star after is it im we have a star but what we understand is y0 is same as star y1 and is it 0 is is it 1 so the initial star can be fixed by replacing the first index by 0 giving we are having y0 and here it is is it not so the problem with this missing star can be replaced by or reduced uh, that is 
uh, resolved by replacing the first index by 0 we will be getting y0 y i1 y i2 etc up to y i m and z0 z i1 z i2 etc up to z i m followed by star. So, now once again we are having a star at the end. So, the final star how do we handle that is it is by appending the index k plus 1. So, what this k plus 1 is actually is your k plus 1 is in y it is dollar in z it is going to be star dollar. So, now we will be having y plus 1 appended on both that is the, on the left hand side and z k plus 1 appended on the right hand side. So, thus giving you only dollar on the uh, end of the right hand side so left hand side and a star dollar on the rightmost end of the uh, right hand side. So, now we will be having a new solution we start with 0 and uh, i 1 i 2 i 3 etc up to i m and finally, it terminates with k plus 1 which is going to be solution of the instance called PCP. So, this proof shows that so any MPCP can be reduced into a PCP and also if the given MPCP has solution then definitely we can claim that the corresponding PCP is also having solution. So, if the MPCP starts with the solution that is W1 and X1 on both sides then followed by we are having i 1 i 2 i 3 etc up to i m that is going solution space. Then in the case of your corresponding P C P the solution space is 0 followed by i 1 i 2 i 3 etc up to i m and it is terminating with k plus 1 that is the last pair to be used is the k plus 1 the pair and the first pair to be used is the 0th pair it means the solution implicitly it starts with the 0th pair, but you cannot start with any other pair because we do not find out any other match. We have to start with 0th pair and it goes up to k plus 1th pair. So, every MPCP can be reduced to PCP and if it is possible for the reduction then if the given MPCP has solution certainly we can claim that the corresponding PCP is also having a solution. So, that is about the proof. So, now the question is how do you prove that PCP is undecidable. So, there is a simple framework given here actually the PCP is the final outcome we have L u that means the universal language the universal language is already proved as an undecidable language because of for L u there exists a Turing machine. So, now this L u is transformed into MPCP an instance of MPCP that is a given L u there is a Turing machine problem we write a simple algorithm which is polynomial in nature that can be transformed into that is MPCP instance and already we have seen the transformation of MPCP instance to PCP instance which means your L u is reducible to MPCP and MPCP is reducible to PCP which implies if L u is undecidable then PCP is also undecidable. So, that is what the procedure. So, we need to have the transformation from L u to that is M P C P by writing an algorithm for that and then M P C P to P C P an algorithm for the same, but we have seen earlier how that is been transformed by forming two new list. So, once the we have the proof that L u is undecidable because of these reductions these subsequent reductions will prove that P C P is also undecidable. So, now we shall take one instance of an ins that is L u problem that is universal language and we shall see that is how this L u is reduced into M P C P. As far as L u is concerned what will be given for you is an universal language that is a Turing machine of the form M comma w and this problem has a solution provided M accepts w it has no solution provided M does not accept w. So, that is the reason why we claim that it is going to be an L u problem. So, now we are constructing an instance of uh, that is two lists that is A and B of M P C P, but subject to the condition that the T m m accepts w if and only if the instance A comma B has a solution. So, L u is given means 
you are given a Turing machine and a string that is m comma w is given and that instance has a solution provided w is accepted by m. Now we transform this m comma w into two list a comma b such that if m comma w has a solution then we can claim that a comma b also has a solution. If m comma w has no solution then the instance of the PCP that is your MPCP uh, a comma b is also not having a solution. So, the question is what, what it does is the MPCP instance of a comma b that is it is simulating the computation of m on input w. So, whatever be the steps required for verifying whether w is accepted by this m or not it is going to be simulated by your MPCP. So, what do we have as party solution is it consists of the strings that are prefixes of the sequence of ids of this m. So, when you look at the transformation that you are uh, recognition of strings by any Turing machine it keeps on generating the subsequent ids. So, maybe starting with q naught it will keep on produce subsequent ids and uh, those ids will be the equivalent partial solution as far as mpcp are concerned. So, as long as partial solutions are, are, are they are generating subsequent ids of the corresponding Turing machine the equivalent problem in your MPCP has a partial solution. Whenever the Turing machine that is M stops without making a proper move or whenever it finds that there is no valid move further available, then the equivalent MPCP says that there is no corresponding pair to match with the partial solution. So, in that case it is both sides that is if our uh, Turing machine fails to recognize a string called W and the correspondingly the a b that is instance of your p m p c p says that there is no solution. But if you find that the m p c p or the, the Turing machine has a solution then we will be able to find out a solution for the corresponding m p c p problem also. So, we have a uh, that is framework which is given for constructing the uh, L, that is m p c p from l u that means how we are reducing l u to m p c p. So, what is given you is a sequence of transitions and what we need to find out is two number of lists a and b. Assume that you are having the Turing machine m with the various components there are seven components the transitions input alphabet stack alphabet then sorry first one is set of states and here with the transitions starting state blank symbol and the final states. So, the list a and the list b are formed as follows. As far as list a is concerned we are forming the very first pair by using hash on list a and uh, on list b what is the starting state of the Turing machine followed by what string is to be recognized that is w followed by a hash. So, hash alone on list a q naught w hash on list b. The next group of strings in list a and list b are for every symbol this every tape symbol in the Turing machine you can have it on the list A and we can have it on the list B and the hash which is a symbol which is a symbol equivalent for the blank which can be there in list A and corresponding symbol can be there in list B. That means, every symbol from the tape alphabet can be appended any number of times and one or more number of hash can also be included on the end of the string. So, this is the purpose of having the list A and the list B from first two groups. But whereas, this third group it is actually formed by generating the various uh, that is transitions. So, the initial state has been recognized first of all by knowing what is the starting state and what is the string to be processed by using that we are getting two number of groups and the third group is obtained by constructing or seeing what are all the various transitions available in the given Turing machine. We shall go for a short break and then we will continue this. Welcome back. We have seen that is how L u is reduced into M P C P. Also, we have seen there is given an M P C that is given a L u problem. How we are transforming it into that is M P C P with the help of a uh, that is framework, where we have seen two number of groups already formed. The third group is formed as follows. So we have 
first of all all states but the condition is it's not a final state that is for all q in q minus f that is for all q which is not a non final state and uh, x y z are all in gamma see how do you find out list a and list b that is if the transition is del of q comma x is equal to p comma y comma r it means q is a current state x is a current type symbol we are moving towards the right by replacing x by y and continue with p that is as far as list a and list b are concerned if you have list a with the q comma x the q x then the meaning is replace x by y and move towards right that is the next symbol is going to be the one following y but continue with the state number p the next transition is so if q comma x is giving you p comma y comma l then we are having q comma x since we need to move a make a left move we need to account the symbol available on the left side of z left side of q which means that for all z there on the left of q we will be having a new pair called uh, that is z q x and p z y because we replace x by y that is done we make a left move the symbol on the left is z and we continue with p the next one q hash so it is going to be replaced by y p and hash it is because of we see a blank on the right side of the current state called q and we replace it by y and we continue further r so still even the new state p is also finding a blank that is the reason why the resulting pair is going to be q hash giving you y p and hash suppose if it is going to be a left move then what do we have is del of q comma b if it is equal to p comma y comma l q comma hash that is because of q comma blank so this blank is going to be replaced by y it's done since we see that there is a blank on the tape as current symbol after replacing that symbol by y what follows that y is also a hash so we must introduce hash there saying that there is no more symbols there and on the left hand side of your q earlier we had i said so now it is on the right hand side of p where p is a new state so this is how we are obtaining the pair from list a and list b with the help of non final states then when you are looking at the final states irrespective of whatever be the transition we are having once we have seen the state is a final state so if you, if you are having list a string that is x q y if it is going to be q as the next state so q is a state but it is a final state then the list b is going to be q that is x q y if you find on list a corresponding string which can be padded on to list b sequences q even if it is x q no problem we go for q if it is q y we go for q and the very last pair here is we are having q hash hash in list a and we are introducing simply hash into list b so these are all the various uh, that is pairs or groups formed by uh, that is the given lu to mpcp reduction so first we have seen that uh, the initial state how it is being formed and then we have seen that is the various transitions are taken into account for that how do we form the groups and then we have seen that is when the final state has been reached what do we do that so that we have already seen and finally we are introducing a final group that is for converging the solution and that is going to be reached only if we have already reached the final state of the turing machine so now we have a simple example so you are given a turing machine here three states uh, then tape alphabet is 0 1 b and uh, we are having the transition del the starting state is q1 blank and the final state is going to be q3 the transitions are given for you so now to see the construction we want to know what is the input pair input string that is w that is 0 1 and here forming the list a and list b so this is formed from the initial construction that is hash on the list a hash q1 0 1 hash on the list b because 0 1 is the pattern to be verified that is the string to be verified and for each symbol x in gamma 
introduce that symbol in list A and list B. So, 0, 0 introduced and then 1, 1 introduced and also hash being introduced. Then looking at the very first transition, Q10 is giving you Q21R. So, Q10 is going to be 0 replaced by 1. It is a right move. So, go for the next to right, next to 1. So, we are having Q2 and then it is going to be Q11 is giving you Q20L that is second transition. It means a 1 replaced by 0 move towards left. So, Q11 on the left hand side of Q1 we may have either a 0 or 1. So, both must be taken into account now. So, 0 Q11, 1 Q11 and here it is Q200 that is the result of replacing 1 by 0 and the second one is once again it is Q11 means it is going to be here you are having Q11 it is Q20L and what happens here is this 1 is replaced by a 0 and we are moving towards left. So, Q11 is there and uh, we have actually replaced this 1 by 0 and moved towards left. So, we will be on the left of 1 because 1 already is there on the left of this 1. Then if you are looking at del of q1 comma b, the result is or the output is q21l. Here we handle it by introducing hash there. So, q1 hash before that we have a 0, q1 hash before that we have a 1 and the output is q201 hash, q211 hash. And as far as the remaining transitions are concerned, we are having that is q20. So, we are having the output is Q 3 0 L and uh, the list A string is 0 Q 2 0 and list B is the 0 not deep disturbed, but the change of state is from Q 2 to Q 3 and it is a left move. So, Q 3 0 0 then del of Q 2 comma 0 Q 3 0 L and then 1 Q 2 0 it is replaced by Q310 because of Q2 if it is a 0 since it is left move we must account the left symbol also. So, it is going to be Q310. The next one is Q2, 1 if it is going to be Q1, 0, R the Q21 it replaces 1 by 0 and moves right. So, leaving 0 on the left side the current state become Q1. So, it is our Q1. So, your Q21 is changing to 0 Q1. Then Q2 hash. See the transition is Q2 comma blank is equal to Q20 R. So, it is going to be a right move, but we see a hash. So, Q2 hash is this hash has been replaced by a 0. So, 0 and moves towards right. So, it is once again seeing hash and no change of state because of the transition is also saying that no change of state. So, it is going to be Q2 comma hash, but when you go for all these are only for Q3. So, states which are other than Q3, but here we are having Q3. It means that when you find 0 Q3 0, Q3 is a final state. So, simply replace this 0 Q3 0 by Q3 and can be for 0 q 3 1 it is q 3 1 q 3 0 it is going to be q 3 1 q 3 1 that is also q 3 because wherever we find q 3 as a final state that is in the source string simply write only the q 3 the left of the strings or symbols will be completely ignored and the final one is here having the unary cases 0 q 3 means q 3 1 q 3 is q 3 and q 3 0 is q 3 and q 3 1 is also q 3. The last one q 3 hash hash the corresponding string is going to be hash. So, this is how we are forming the uh, there is reduction from L u to M P C P. So, what is given actually is a Turing machine along with the set of all transitions and what we get out of that is we are having two different lists list A and list B are obtained. So, three stages first the initial stages initial groups 
the second one is going to be the various transitions and how they are transforming it into uh, the equivalent groups and final one is on seeing the final state what should be done so now the question is we want to have a situation very similar to the one like 0 1 is going to be accepted by your Turing machine or not so the idea in your Turing machine is start from the starting state and keep on finding the various IDs and see whether we are able to reach the final ID configuration or not but whereas in the case of equivalent uh, that is MPCP problem the situation is forming two different groups of strings on both sides from list A and list B such that the concatenation on the string on the left hand side is going to be the concatenation same concatenation string obtained by the concatenation so now see how we are doing the same process that is how do you find out whether the problem has a solution or not you are given an MPCP problem and if you want you can even reduce this MPCP problem into a PCP problem but now here we are having this finding whether this MPCP has solution or not so first we should know that we must start with the very first group because this problem is an MPCP problem so the very first group is hash hash q101 hash on list b hash on list a and hash q101 hash on list b the 0 1 is the string which is going to be verified whether it is accepted by this Turing machine or not so next you look at this actually we are having uh, that is q10 on list a and the corresponding uh, that is string in your list b is this one 1 q2 the corresponding one we find there is a prefix match hash q10 is a prefix match for list b so we find that there is a solution partial solution and once again we find 1 hash 1 and the correspondingly here we include 1 hash 1 so there is a partial solution and then we are including q21 and here we are having including q21 but 0 q1 is corresponding pair from your list b so still we find that partial solution so this are what, what we call the partial solution but the complete solution is this one at the end we are getting list a a lengthier string ending with hash and list b once again a lengthier string starting with hash q10 and ending with q3 hash hash so we find both the strings are having the uh, that is both sides are having the same string it means the strings are going to be same the mpcp instance has a solution so this is how we are proving that uh, your mpcp is going to be reducible sorry lu is reducible into mpcp and mpcp can be reduced into pcp and since early LU is already proved as undesirable problem we can claim that your PCP is also going to be undesirable problem so to summarize we have seen the reduction from uh, MPCP to PCP and we have seen an example of how and it is LU has been reduced into an MPCP instance so that is what we have seen the questions here so we can have the reduction from MPCP to PCP instance reduction and also proving that PCP is undesirable so to prove that PCP is undesirable we are actually starting with LU reducing for MPCP and then reducing for PCP and since LU is already undesirable we can claim that PCP is also undesirable so with this I conclude this episode thank you all